What's going on everybody, it's Warmer Fitness here. So, I'm introducing a new day in uh, my workout split. So basically, it's an accessory day. So, it's gonna be focusing on uh, calves, forearms, one hamstring exercise, and one uh, quad exercise, because I'm not really, ha I don't have a dedicated leg day, but I still wanna make sure like things like my adductors, abductors don't um, fall behind, um, make sure that my hips still have strength, make sure I'm still able to really flex my quad and hamstring and of course I want to bring up my uh, forearms because I've put an inch and a half on my biceps and tries since I've started um, this bulk back in June. So check it out, we're going to start with some mobility first and then we'll get into the actual workout. Alright what's going on everybody, so we're starting with some mobility training like I said. Um, I'm a big fan of always warming up with mobility, not stretching cold muscles. The likelihood of you uh, turn muscles a lot higher when you just go straight into stretching it. Uh, I, now, that's not to say that stretching isn't good, okay? <laughs> Def, I would say make sure that you get some blood in there, you get your heart rate up, warm it up, and then by all means, feel free to stretch. Now, I've done a video, a short video on the uh, Theragun before, and it is hands down one of my favorite uh, tools in my gym bag. It is absolutely phenomenal for getting knots out, tightness out, everything like that. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to be massage gunning all the areas that I'm going to be hitting today in the gym. So big focus on the calves and the forearms, like I said. Also going to make sure that the hips, the quads, and the hamstrings also have a chance to get loosened up as well. Get the blood in there, get it flowing. Basically, the goal here is you want to be able to perform optimally in the gym. And mobility training and using a massage gun are things that will definitely help you with that and avoid injury and just get you the best workout that you can get. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and kick this off with some calf training. We're going to do three speed body weight calf raises. The way that these are performed, right, is you're going to do 10 slow reps, slow and controlled, keep your heels together. Then you're going to do 10 medium speed reps, heels are still together, right? And then you're going to do 10 fast reps. Basically, you're going to be hitting different types of muscle fibers, both slow twitch and fast twitch. That's why you do the different speed variations. Now we're gonna do more strength oriented, right? So we're gonna do donkey calf raises, five sets, 10 to 12 reps, okay? This is a heavier weight. It's at about, I think 300 pounds, whatever the max weight for this machine is. So if you're gonna be a little bit further apart, we wanna engage more of the entire calf. On the previous exercise, the main focus was the outer calf or the part that's closest to the outside of your leg. This is more for overall calf development. Now we're going to be doing single leg calf raises. This is more of an athletic exercise, okay? This is more for balance and coordination. Nonetheless, it's still a great exercise as long as you're doing it with good form and you're keeping it slow and controlled and you're getting a full extension of the muscle. Alright, so we're going to finish off the calf training today with some seated calf raises. 4 sets, 10 to 12 reps, nothing too heavy. At this point, my calves are pretty much fried. Um, as you can see, these exercises give me an insane shin pump. Um, that's right, you can get a pump in your shin, you can have muscles on your shin. These exercises, or this exercise in particular, is really good for helping develop a strong shin muscle. Alright, so the pretty much one and only uh, hamstring exercise that I'll be doing for quite some time is going to be the hamstring curl. 5 sets, 10 to 20 reps, very high reps for this exercise. The main goal here isn't so much to put on mass, it is to really feel the muscle contract and really um, get better at flexing it when I do um, back shots like back double bicep, back lat spread and so on. So that's the goal for this. Next, we're going to do the rogue belt squat. So 
If you've been following me for any time, you know that I no longer do back squats. I have protruding discs in my back, and I just figure the risk isn't worth the reward, so I'm switching to these. The reason I'm doing these exercises, we're going to hit the quads, hamstrings, glutes, hips, basically everything that's hit in doing a regular squat without having the danger of having 500 pounds on my back. Alright, now we're going to move to some exercises that a lot of guys, a lot of people shy away from because let's just be real, it hurts and it looks a little awkward. But, so, adductor machine, okay? If you want strong hips, if you want a strong deadlift, strong squats, strong legs, just to be athletic and to have few muscle imbalances, you cannot neglect these, okay? They're going to hurt at first, but I would suggest definitely warming them up and stretching before you do this exercise, especially if you're going to go heavy. Following that, we move over to the adductor machine. Three sets, 12 to 15 reps. This is really going to target the outside of the glutes and hips. And again, like I said in the beginning of the video, we really want to make sure that we keep the hips healthy, keep them strong, keep them functioning, and make sure that the rest of my body doesn't start to outpace my hips because that is oftentimes uh, resulting in uh, lower back pain. All right, now we're gonna go to the pretty much one and only uh, ab exercise that I really do. It's a three-way cable crunch showed to me by my coach. So the reason that I pretty much only do this is because it hits everything that I need it to hit and it hits it really, really good. I always get insane engagement and I even get a pump in my abs. So it's gonna hit the outer obliques which is what you see when you're really lean. And of course the six pack, which obviously is the six pack. So this is pretty much the only ab exercise that I really do just because like I said, I get really good engagement and I've had really good results from it. All right, now we're gonna move on to some forearm training. So we're gonna do elevated kibble forearm curl. Now, the reason that I like this is because unlike with free weights, right, at the bottom of the exercise and for the first maybe half of the repetition, there's not as much tension on the forearm. With this, there's constant tension throughout the entire exercise. So you get a little bit more muscle engagement and it burns insanely. Following that, we're gonna move over to some reverse grip easy bar curls with, if you look closely, some fat grips. So fat grips, really good for getting a little extra forearm engagement. Makes obviously the grip much bigger, so you're gonna use more of your forearms in performing the exercise. And finally, we're going to do rope with plate four arm curl. Three sets basically until failure. Now, if you basically want to see Jesus, this is the exercise to do it. This will destroy whatever is left of your forearms. I don't recommend starting forearm training off with this because you just won't really be able to pick much up after doing a few sets of this exercise. I only use a 10 pound weight and that is quite challenging for me. Some people can probably get away with just using the rope. If you can use more than 10 pounds, then my hat goes off to you because this is intense and it burns like crazy.